So welcome back to part two in this series about IoT, uh, where we're using the Garmin Connect IQ platform to create an app on a watch that's going to submit up into the internet. Um, stay tuned and subscribe for uh, the third installment of this, which is going to be training an AI model based on the data that we get from this, um, this test today. So as you can see, uh, we've got the architecture up on the screen. The watch is submitting REST APIs. It's using a phone as a kind of internet proxy. Uh, but we don't have to worry about that. That's taken care of by Garmin. And we're submitting those uh, REST API calls into Event Hubs. And we're posting data as a JSON file. Uh, Event Hubs will then automatically store that to blob for us in Avro format so that we're getting every single message that comes in, recording those. We're not going to use that storage for anything today. That's purely so that we've got that captured to do machine learning on it later. Uh, we're then going to pass that over to Stream Analytics from the Event Hub. Stream Analytics will take all of those packets and push them into Power BI, and we're going to create a real-time dashboard. So with that, let's get on with the demo and uh, have fun. So first things first, we're going to create a storage account, as we always do on these demos. Um, generally speaking, when you're architecting in the cloud, you're going to need somewhere to put data. So that's why blob storage comes into so many of these demos. So just standard create a resource, put it in a new resource group. For this one, I'm calling it the Connect IQ demo. And choose a region. I tend to use East US because most things are available there, even though I'm obviously not based in the US. But when the demo is all within a single data center, the actual location doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so give the storage account a name choose your location and make sure that you change that replication from RAGRS to locally redundant storage just to save a bit of money. Uh, you don't need the expensive versions of the storage. We don't need to replicate this, it's just a demo. So once that's created, uh, we're then going to click on to go to resource. And once that loads, uh, go to the blob section. And then we're going to just create a container. This is where the data is going to end up. Um, so although we don't use this here, we are going to use it for the next demo uh, where we're going to need some data to train a model. So call it watch data, click OK. And then we're done creating the blob storage. So next we're going to create the event hub. So add a resource again, choose event hub. and click create. And the event hub is basically just a big ingestion system that's an endpoint for the uh, IoT to connect to. So here we're going to call it Connect IQ Demo again. Choose a pricing tier. We're going to use standard um, that allows us to have multiple um, kind of channels, if you like, for uh, devices to connect to. So each device could have its own channel. Um, which can be quite useful later on, or each device type could have a, a channel. So again, we're going to choose location, choose the resource group, and click Create. And that goes off and creates us our event hub. And then once that's done, we're going to go in and configure event hub. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is to turn the firewall off. So obviously uh, security people are probably having a bit of a panic attack right now. This is internet devices. We don't know what network they're going to come in from. So trying to control the IP addresses where they're coming from is just not practical. So the firewall here doesn't really serve any purpose because there's only the, the port open that it needs. Um, so actually, we need to allow these from any network. I could be coming in from my mobile phone or from my home Wi-Fi network or from my work network. Um, so actually, normally when in these kind of situations, you would not have the firewall switched on. Um, the firewall is, is an option if you've got a very locked down um, on-premise type solution. So once we've done that, uh, we're then going to create an event hub. So uh, the first thing that we created was actually called a namespace, and that's create, created us connectiqdemo dot 
um, whatever the the domain for the event hubs are. Uh, and this is the actual hub within that. So you can have multiple hubs if you want to for different purposes. And here we're going to create one called watch data. And as part of this, we're going to select that um, container that we created earlier. So here we're basically saying every message that comes in, I want that written off the disk um, into this container. And you can see there the format that the file structure is going to have. This is going to become useful when we're training the model later. So we can choose a particular day, hour, minute uh, for training the model on. So if I've got two hours of, of easy heart rate data, I might want to train it on that um, so that I can create a model that recognizes easy heart rate data. And then when I go for a run, the model correctly would identify that I'm, I'm suddenly out of my resting heart rate. Uh, so next here, we're going to create a shared access policy. This is going to be to allow the actual watch to authenticate. Um, so we're giving it send permissions that lets it, it submit uh, new messages onto the queue. Uh, once that's created, we click on it and we can copy the, uh, the primary key. Uh, so you've got two keys there, so you might want to rotate those as you release a new version of the app, for instance. Uh, so version one would use the primary, then version two would use the secondary, then you would recreate the primary for the following go. Um, just make sure the key is fresh so that if it's compromised, there's no issues there. And then we need to create a shared access signature. For this, there's the app that is linked to uh, in the notes. Um, so in this little app, we're going to paste in that key and the, um, the kind of policy name that we've just created, Connect IQ app. Then we're putting in the namespace. This is the one that we called the namespace earlier and the hub name of watch data. Publisher is the unique identifier of the thing that's sending the data in. So here I've said my watch. I think in the instructions I said use the serial number of the watch. The TTL, uh, if you put about 500,000, that gives you a year of, of use. Um, normally you would have this much, much smaller and you'd have the watch creating the, um, the token on device potentially and, and rotating that automatically. Um, so I just highlighted in there that you can actually see the submission URL within that token. So that that's the reason why I'm going to paste this into both of these variables in the uh, in the Eclipse editor. And then the one that I've pasted under the URL variable, I'm just going to delete all the extra stuff and I'm going to replace the percent two Fs with forward slashes and percent three A with a colon. Um, just to get it back to the, the correct URL and to make it easy for me to read. Uh, so it probably would work if we left these in. But I like to be able to uh, to see what's happening at a glance. So you can see here that the URL is connectiqdemo.servicebus.windows.net. That's the namespace. Then we've got watch data is the event hub and then publishers and then whatever the publisher name is afterwards, which is my watch and messages at the end. Um, so this is all case sensitive in the shared access token and it's very, very specific about that URL being correct as well as the token being correct. So if your demo doesn't work at the end of this, this is probably where something's gone wrong is either in generating that key, there may be a typo in something that you typed into that uh, key generation tool or you may have made a mistake on this um, entering the code or editing that URL. That's happened to me several times while I've been writing the demo, and it's always been my fault. There's there's never been a problem with the Azure platform. Uh, so here, once we start up the simulator and uh, start sending data, you see the response code minus 400. That's not an HTTP code. That is the um, that's the Connect IQ app responding, saying that there was a successful response from the internet, but it was empty. There was no uh, payload with it, which there is supposed to be. Event Hubs doesn't send a payload because it's tr it's designed for performance and scalability. Um, so Garmin lists all of those codes that they have internally. They're all minus something as a response to an HTTP request. So once that's running, uh, data should be flowing through into our um, our system now. Um, so we're now going to go into Power BI, create a namespace. Sorry, a workspace. Um, the reason why this is going to be a bit broken up is 
just because certain things rely on certain other things. So we have to create a workspace, then create the stream analytics, then come back into Power BI to create the dashboard. So coming back into the portal here, we're creating a stream analytics job. So there's no concept here of creating a stream analytics service. Uh, everything is, is just a job and you start and stop those jobs as and when you need. So give it a name. Again, I'm going to use Connect IQ Demo. Um, so I, I find it easier to call everything the same thing. You may want to call it Connect IQ Demo Analytics Job or something just to know which is which. But the, the portal shows you what each thing is. Uh, as you can see here, under the type, it tells you what those things are. So I don't see a need to put it into the actual name. So once we're in, we need to create an input, an output, and a query. And the query is going to take data from the input, filter it potentially, and push it to the output. So first we'll create our output. This is going to be the Power BI namespace that I've just created. So we're going to give it a name. I've, I've used Power BI here because it's it's nice and simple. I very rarely have multiple things in my stream analytics job. If I did, I would use a more complicated name. Um, so here you just have to authenticate against Power BI. This is behind the scenes getting a token for Power BI and storing it so that it can authenticate against the service because uh, it's this app is effectively um, pretending to be me while it's while it's doing this. So choose the workspace. We're going to give the data set a name. I'm, I'm using watch data all the way through for the, uh, the data name. I used that on the storage account earlier as well. The table name I'm just calling data. You might want to use sensor data or something like that. Um, it doesn't really matter. This is just how you see it in Power BI when you later go in to consume the data. So that's that one created. Uh, you may have noticed that just did a, a brief test to make sure it worked. That would fail if, if you'd done anything wrong. Uh, but it's hard to do things wrong because it's a wizard driven interface that's just choosing stuff as you go through. So now we go on input and we're creating the event hub. Uh, so here again, I'm just going to call it event hub. But you might want to call it connect IQ event hub or something if, if you prefer stronger naming schemes. I'm going to choose the uh, event hub namespace and event hub. And the rest is just filled in. So click save. That will then again do a brief test and everything will come back fine. And then we'll click on query. Uh, within the query, if you give it a second, it does come up with this default query. Uh, all you therefore have to do if you want all of the data to go through is replace the into with the output and the from with the input. You can obviously use SQL-like queries to select specific things, uh, specific columns, that kind of stuff. But here we literally just want all the data to be streamed through. Later on, we're going to create a function with the machine learning uh, and we'll run it through that. And that will then add in and enrich the data with the output of the machine learning algorithm to say either this is normal heart rate data or it's not normal heart rate data. But for now, we're just getting the plain input and passing it through. Uh, so then we click back on overview and we have to start this job. Once you st it's started, you're not able to edit the inputs, query or outputs. So you'd have to come back here to stop the job again. Uh, choose a time. I have never come across a time when I didn't want to just start it now and leave it running. Uh, so now we're going to start up the, the app again if, if you stopped it in the meantime. And once it started, start that simulation data again, just so that we've got something dynamic to see. Uh, equally, at this point, if you have sideloaded the app onto a device, then you can just start it on the device. That will submit to the same place. You'll get the same data through. Uh, obviously, if you have multiple devices sending to the same endpoint, then you would see all of that data modeled up. And that's partly why we've got the, the multiple channels within event hubs. So back in Power BI, we're creating a dashboard and adding a, a card to it with streaming data. Here I've chosen heart rate. Um, and then we'll create a graph. If you saw part one of this series, you'll have seen the full dashboard that I created with 
accelerometer data and um, magnetometer data. And all I'm doing is using the event processed time here as the uh, x-axis, the heart rate is the y-axis. And then you'll see as time goes on the heart rate, which is very, very high at the moment because it's an exercise simulator, um, it will just bob up and down as the new data comes in in real time. Um, and then just go in and experiment with the, the various fields that are available in there. So if you've got an actual device, you may or may not have barometers, accelerometers, all that kind of stuff depending on the model. Uh, so it's then up to you to decide how you want to interpret them and, and what you want to do with them. So quickly just show you back onto that storage account um, where it was dumping the data to. So once that loads, we can go to Storage Explorer and click back to open up the um, container. And then within that container, we'll see the hierarchy uh, as we saw earlier when we created it. And it will be year, then month, then day, then hour, then minutes, then seconds. Uh, it was configured to dump every five minutes. So we'll see one file for each five minute period. Um, so here we can see the namespace, the, um, the event hub. And then this is that hierarchy we were talking about that you can see in the address bar as it builds up. Uh, so one o'clock. Uh, this is 114 and 114 and 11 seconds it created this so if we open this it's going to be gibberish because it's avro format but within that uh, you can see that we've got pressure we've got speed we've got longitude latitude um, so all the data is in there and then later on we can interpret that and train a model with it So hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, this second part of the series. Uh, make sure to subscribe, and if you enjoyed these demos, then please hit the like button below, um, and come back again for the third instalment where we're going to be adding machine learning to this and training a model uh, so that we can recognise normal heart rate, uh, and more importantly, recognise non-normal heart rates, um, and then we'll put that into stream analytics so that we can, in real time, get some feedback on on how our heart rate is going. So thanks and see you next time.